morning everyone how are you doing this week is mental health awareness week in the united kingdom and yeah i know we're not in the uk but um i'm on twitter and i see quite a lot of tweets about that and it made me thinking about the the stigma that is still attached to mental health to things like depression anxiety um addiction and it made me realize that I need to make a contribution in that regard. I also realized that my eyes are looking quite awful without my glasses on. But yesterday with the glasses on, I thought that I saw the reflection of the computer too much in my eyes. So um, yeah, let's hope this works. Right, I have been suffering from depression for most of my life. I eventually decided to get help for the first time, well, I suppose 20 years ago. I saw a few psychologists to get help and honestly I didn't find any relief from them. Um, one psychologist told me that I'm depressed because I'm gay and that I'm gay because I'm the youngest of four children and that I didn't have any other options about what to choose for myself in my life so I chose to be gay. Another psychologist told me again that um, Oh yes, that I was depressed because of all the failed relationships I, 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 I have left behind me. And that the reason why I have these failed relationships is because there's nothing wrong with the people I choose to have relationships with. It's just that I choose the wrong people to have relationships with. So I needed to change the people that I choose. Then in later years, I saw a psychologist while I was in full-blown active addiction. And I told her that I have a, definitely a problem smoking marijuana, but I did not tell her about all the coke and cat that I used and how much I drank. So she saw me one day while I was, I did a line of cat in her toilet before I went to see her. And she told me that she thinks that it's healthy for me to smoke marijuana because it slows me down to a level where I function better. Needless to say, none of that helped. And when I came into recovery, I was actually on antidepressants prescribed to me by a doctor. He didn't know that I was in active addiction, so he didn't know that I threw my emotions all over the place, going up, going down, just, just this complete chaos. And because I wasn't honest with him, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't have known. So he couldn't have made a correct diagnosis. Then, being clean for about two years, I felt extremely depressed. And for the first time in my life, I realized that I might actually be depressed. I might actually suffer from depression because I was clean and sober. I was working a plastic program. I was really, really happy to be clean and sober. But I couldn't feel it. I, I, I knew I was happy. I knew this is what I wanted in my life. But I couldn't feel it. So with intervention from some friends, I eventually ended up to seeing a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist I saw has extensive knowledge of working with people of with people suffering from addiction and i believe i got to the right person she evaluated me she prescribed medication antipsychotics as well as antidepressants the antipsychotics were prescribed just to get me over that bump of i was i was suicidal so she wanted me to to just get over the really bad bump until the antidepressants started clicking in in a few weeks time and i started feeling better immediately it was quite a, a conundrum for me because i felt that i was i was proving that the 12 steps don't work because how can i be clean and sober and depressed and the morning that i went to see the psychiatrist i actually prayed about it and told my higher power that i'm not comfortable doing this and the, a voice just came into my head that said, Freddie, I'm sending you. I am sending you. And I suddenly realized this is my higher power's will for me. I am clean and sober not to be clean and sober in a dark place being depressed. My higher power wants me to be clean and sober, to live life, to go out and enjoy life. If that means that I need to take medication for my depression, then I'm okay with that. So the antidepressants work. As in really, really worked. And I felt I felt like a new person. I couldn't believe that I could actually feel this good. Then 
because I was feeling so good, I started thinking that maybe I'm not that depressed, maybe I don't have to be on antidepressants. So eventually I discussed this with my psychiatrist and I saw her every six months to reevaluate the whole depression thing. And after about a year and a half, maybe two years of being on antidepressants, I decided to weed myself out. So I went on half a tablet for six months, a quarter of a tablet for another six months, and then we stopped. Strange enough, I still felt very good. The only side effect I had with coming off the antidepressants is I had a, I had a tweet in my head. It was too weird. It sounded as if there was a bird in my head. And I googled it. Yeah, Dr. Google, I know we're not supposed to use Dr. Google, rather use real professionals. Anyway, I used Dr. Google and Dr. Google told me that it's quite a regular symptom of coming off antidepressants. So I didn't worry about it too much. And then my life was good. I was off antidepressants. I was working recovery. I was clean and sober for about six years. And one day, I, I don't know what I was about to do at my desk. I was sitting at my desk working and suddenly... As I wanted to do this thing, my head just said to me, what are you doing? You can't do this. You, you're just not equipped to do this. You're wasting your life. And I went from there to right down. And the depression started. And I realized that the depression was actually lingering for quite a while, but I wasn't paying attention to it. And on that specific day, when I listened to the voice and entertained it, I just, I just, I, I became depressed again. And I did everything that I could except taking antidepressants because I couldn't believe that this is actually what it is. But after a while of, of, of living in consultation, listening to my husband, speaking to friends, and I suddenly realized that, you know what, I need to go back to a psychiatrist. So I went back and we re repeated the routine of antipsychotics for a short while until antidepressants kicked in. Again, I felt better. And I made a big decision on that day. And that was that I need to accept that I suffer from depression. That there's a chemical imbalance or something in my head that makes me depressed. And that if I want to live a happy life contributing to society, then I might have to be on antidepressants for the rest of my life. And from that day, I've been thinking of myself as a depression sufferer. And I'm not uncomfortable to introduce myself as I am, or to think of myself as I am Freddy, I am a drug addict, I'm an alcoholic, I'm a sex addict, and I suffer from depression. So what that meant was I accepted it. I accepted what was wrong with me. And I took action and I got the help that I needed. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. Because today, I am clean and sober. I work a program of recovery. I take my antidepressants. And life is bloody awesome. It's not what I want it to be every day. But that's not what life is about. Life's going to happen. I am going to have bad days. I'm going to have excellent. And a lot of bad days, I realize that I'm the one who causes the bad days because I entertain some bullshit in my head. I engage in activities that are not conducive for me. But I do it because that's what I do. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. But today I just want to say, my name is Freddie. I'm a depression sufferer. But I'm not suffering because of it. I'm taking action and my life is awesome. There's absolutely no reason for anybody to suffer from depression. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is a choice. If you suffer from depression, please get help. There's help out there. Talk to people. Don't be ashamed of it. Shame, shame dies on exposure. Get it out of your head. Get it out in the open. And let it be dealt with. Please talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's remove the stigma associated to it. It's not your fault. Okay? I hope this helps. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.